Man, we want to thank Brother Cross for that song. Amen. It's one of my favorite songs of all time. Because all we need is just a little talk with Jesus. Amen. And a lot of, I make our life just a whole lot better. I want to just be thankful and grateful to God for allowing uh, our uncle, my uncle to come back, Amen. Brother Graves. And I know we've all missed him greatly. I know I definitely have missed him greatly. And we're just glad to have you back today. Did to see that smiley face? Well, not so smiley face, but <laughs> we're glad to see you today. And just thank God that you're able to have a normal portion of your health and strength to come out today. And we want to continue to pray for those that are not here, like Sister Joe. All the sisters that you people that you know are extremely faithful, but just not able to get out here. We're glad to have Sister Deborah Dollar back. So good to see her. She was going through a lot and a lot of pain and glad you out the pain and out here today. Amen. And we just thank you. Thank God for all he's done for us. Amen. Well, I won't be too long today. My lesson actually is not that long today. I know y'all won't be complaining about that. Well. <laughs> I had read for you here in Romans 1. 16 and verse number 17 where the Bible reads for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it to the Jew first and also to the Greek for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith I'll make three quick points and the lesson will be yours First of all, we got to learn to remove our shame. Yeah. Next thing we need to do is don't go backwards. Mm -hmm. And lastly, we got to realize the word is all we have. Well. As we examine this text, Romans 1, 16 and 17, I want you to consider why Paul made such a powerful declaration. Why he said that I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. At the time the Romans were in power, and they had all the money, all the wealth. They considered Jesus a magic man. <laughs> Flavius Josephus said that about him. He was a historian at the time. He said that Jesus is a magic man. So a lot of people didn't have a strong belief in Jesus. They just thought he was out there performing magic. So Paul was letting you know that I don't care what you think about Jesus. I believe in Jesus and the power of his word. Amen. But Jesus didn't have a whole lot of wealth. So the Romans looked at them like they was losers. They didn't have all the money. The Bible says about Jesus, it said, Jesus replied in Matthew 8 and 20, that foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. See, well, today, we would call Jesus a scrub. Y'all remember TLC had the song got years ago? I don't want no scrub. Jesus would be considered a scrub today because he didn't have a fancy car, didn't have a house, didn't have any of those things, the worldly things that you would think of in the world. Well, but you got to realize like Jesus knew that if you got God, you got all that you need. Well, amen. Nothing in this world is worth losing your soul over. Pretty. All the money in the world is temporal. What we got to start focusing on is the gospel because it provides eternal blessings amen. and eternal Salvation. Yeah. That's why I said we got to remove our shame. In my life, and I'm sure everybody in here has done something in your life that you've been ashamed of. And if you haven't, you're probably lying to yourself. Everybody has done something they're ashamed of. In my life, I was ashamed of the poison that I sold to the community. I was ashamed of the fornication, many acts of fornication throughout the years of my life. I'm ashamed of all the times I stole something, a lot of our something, I did all this evil stuff. Well, but one thing I'm not ashamed of is obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because it saved me from my life of destruction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now I believe I went through all the things that I went through in life for a purpose. Had I not been selling drugs, I couldn't talk to a drug dealer. Had I not lived a life of fornication, I couldn't talk to somebody out there fornicating. So God has given you specific talents, whatever you went through in your life, to be able to talk and be a blessing and testimony to somebody else. But you can't be ashamed to be that testimony. Amen. You can't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well. But some of us, we're ashamed. We fear ridicule of our family. You know, some people say, well, the Church of Christ is a cult. I don't know if y'all heard that before. Amen. You fear being associated with the church. Yeah. Somebody tell you, well, I had actually, I was engaged once. A lot of people may not know this. Uh, but the girl, the lady I was engaged to refused to be a member of the church. 
So I had to make a decision. Do I love her or do I love the church? Well, y'all already know the decision because I'm still single. <laughs> but I didn't, the fear of rejection and ridicule, that's what people feel about joining the church. You got to ask yourself, do you want to please men or do you want to please God? And then a lot of people say, well, it's a family tradition. My mama was a Baptist. I'm a die Baptist. How many times have y'all heard that before? Well, my mother was this or my father was this, so I'm going to be this. Well, you got to obey God rather than man. Because mama don't have no heaven or hell to put you in, but God Almighty does. So you better do what he said to do if you want to be saved. Now, you don't have to be saved. There's options for you. You can do whatever you want to do. Or you can choose to obey God. The others, they scared because they got a political position in the world. I know a Church of Christ minister right now that changed his name from minister to pastor to go along with the world. He wants to be along with the world. So he changed his name. He he wants to be in the in crowd. How many of us want to be popular, want to be in the in crowd? So we can't be ashamed. We got to be ashamed of the gospel because we want to be with the world, want to be in the in crowd. And then some people are ashamed because they just don't want to change their life. They want to continue to live in sin, continue to be in fornication, to be, continue to be in all this worldliness. So they're not, they're ashamed because they know they're not going to be right. But then others are ashamed because they may lose their loved ones. But you got to realize, friends are fickle. God's word is always going to be the same. But that's why a lot of us, we're fickle too. You know, we joined the church many years ago, some of us, but yet we'll still go to the denomination of church today. Now, you've been saved from all that darkness, but why would you go back to it? That'd be like you eating some food, throwing up the food, then going back and eating that food again. Who does that? But that's exactly what you do when you are you in the church, you leave the church and go back to a denomination of church. You throw you eating your own vomit. Don't eat your own vomit. Yeah, that, that don't taste too good. Some people say, well, it makes no difference what faith they are. They'll tell you that. They'll, it don't matter if I go to Baptist. It don't matter if I go to a denomination or Methodist or any kind of church. It's all good. It's all good according to the world. Well, Let's get to me 1 Corinthians 1, 10 through 13. We're going to see what Jesus in the Bible has to say about this matter. Because the world will tell you it's okay to go to the denomination of church just one Sunday. It's not going to hurt you at all. That's what the, that's the world will tell you. We're going to see what the Bible tells you about this matter. Because one thing as a minister of our job to do is not only to get people saved, but keep the saved saved. Don't go back out into the world once you join the church. 1 Corinthians 1, 10-13 says what? Now I beseech you. Brother, now I beg you, brethren, by the name of, by the Lord, name of our Lord and Savior, Christ, Jesus Christ, that, ye all speak that the you same speak name. the same, the same Thing, and that there be no division, that there be no divisions among you, among you but, that ye be per- but you be perfectly joined together. In the same mind. It said, let there no, be no divisions among you. A Baptist is a division. A Catholic church is a division. Uh, any kind of church you go to that's not the body of Christ is a division. And the Bible told you, let there be no divisions among you. So you know what you're doing when you go to that denominational church? You're going against what the word of God has said. Keep reading, brother. Ye be perfectly joined together in the same Perfectly mind. joined together in the same mind. How can we have the same mind we worship in different ways? How can we have the same mind we in different services? Now, some even Church of Christ have gone astray. And I'll get to that a little later. Keep reading, and brother. In the same judgment. In the same judgment. For it hath been but it has been declared unto you unto me, unto that my brethren, by them, by them that are in the house of Chloe, that there are, that there are some contentions among you. Among you. Now, that, now this I say. Now this I say. Every one of you say now every one of you has said. I am of Paul. I am a Paul. Some people say, hold on. Some people say, I am a Baptist. Go ahead. And I of Apollos. Of, of Cephas. And I of Cephas. And some say I'm of Apollos. So some say I'm a Catholic. Some say I'm a Presbyterian. Some say I'm this, I'm that. Go ahead, read, keep reading, is brother. Christ divided? But is Christ divided? Was Paul? How many Christes were there? There's one Christ. Go ahead, brother. Was Paul crucified? Was Paul for crucified for you? 
Or were you Was John the Baptist crucified for you? Baptist. Was John the Baptist crucified for you? No. <laughs> the Bible says, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I think you know the answer to that. So why go back to the denominational church? Well, <laughs> don't be an enabler. Because a lot of people will tell you, well, you go with me one Sunday, I'll go with you the next Sunday. No, sir, no, ma'am. A church of Christ, no one in the church of Christ has any business going to the denominational church because it violates what God has said. And if you go to church with them, they're going to say, well, but my church must be all right. You went with me. That's why you can't do that. You can't be an enabler for those people. You got to let them know the truth. You got to tell them the truth no matter how much it hurts. You got to be truthful with the people that you love because you want them to be saved. Am I right about it? Amen. See, the denominations don't teach the same thing. Some teach you saved by grace. Others teach you don't have to be baptized. Some say instruments and music is okay. Why would you put yourself in that danger when you know it's wrong? Let's go to 2 Peter 2 and 21. 2 Peter 2 and 21. A lot of us will say, well, it's okay to go with your denominational friends and family. But that's not what the Bible says. I don't want you to be on the day of judgment, looking through those hell of vision lenses, being in hell because you did what the Bible, what you, you went against what the Bible said. You did what you wanted to do. It's real easy to do what you want to do, but if you want to be saved, you got to do what God said to do. Amen. Let's go for me, 2 Peter 2 and 21. Well, it has been better. It has been better for them, for them have who not to have known. So, what up? It's saying it's better for you not, not to have known about Christ the than the ray of righteousness. Then after, after you have known, turn their backs into the same command that was passed on to them. Mm -hmm. So, what he's telling you is, once you know the truth, you've been set free. You can't go back to it. You can't go backwards. You got to stay ahead. And you know what? It makes me. It, it, I really have to question people when they do that, because who would you know, if free from jail, was gonna voluntarily they self to go back to jail? Yeah. Ain't nobody gonna do that. You're not gonna voluntarily go back to bondage. But that's exactly what you do when you leave the church and go back to a denomination. You leave in the ark of safety for bondage. And I would hope that you wouldn't die in that state, because the Bible also says, "If you die in your sins, where I am, you cannot come." And even some in the church have left the faith to become. Now they denomination of churches. Got one right over here in Oak Cliff. We thought they was with us all along, but they were just wolves in street clothing. We thought they was with us. We thought they was among us all this time, but they was not. Skip for me 1 John 2 and 19. 1 John 2 and 19. They went out from us. They went out from us, but they were not of us. But if they had been of us, we would have not the no doubt that they would continue with us. Where they went out, but they went out that they might, that they might make made manifest that they were not of us. Now they got instruments and music. We know now they're not of us. We know that they're not of us. But a lot of people been in the church teaching all this false doctrine and the commandments of men. They're ashamed to do things the Lord's way. But the Lord's way is the only way you're going to be saved. But that's why you can't go backwards. Let's go to first. Give me somebody get for me first Timothy 4, verse 1 and 2. Because this is not something new. People that were in the faith have left the faith before. This ain't something brand new. Like the Bible says, nothing new under the sun. Ain't nothing new about this either. Go ahead, brother. Now this, go ahead. Now the Spirit, now the spirit speak speaketh expressly that in a lot of times some, some shall depart from, depart from the faith. Hold on. It's telling us that some shall depart from the faith. So they were in the faith, but they will depart from the faith. They're going to leave the faith. And we see it right now. Like I said, we got a church right off Pope Street right now that have left the faith. Many have left the faith seeking and doing the commandments of men. Keep reading, brother. Giving heed to seducing Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. They no longer have their way. They lost their way. Now they're in the world. 
That's why man got a serious problem today, thinking he could be saved outside the church. But Ephesians 4 and 4 says, there is one body, one spirit, even as you are calling to one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. You just say one, 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 one. Man says many, but God says one. The sixth verse says, one God and Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in you all. See, Joel Osteen and T.D. Jakes may tell you that it's many, but the Bible says there is one. You ever notice how in the world, all of the religious arena, they get along just fine. They having a big, good, vain worship service. They having a whole lot of fun in the service. They don't agree with, disagree with anything. Even though they may teach different things, they all in one harmonious, er, erroneous service. No problems with that. But we can't be that. We got to separate ourselves from the world. Because the Bible says in Matthew 7, 21, Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. See, the will of his Father is unity. The will of his Father is one church, one faith, one baptism. So, well, why do we have so many churches then? Let's go to Matthew 15 to 9. Go to Matthew 15 to 9. Somebody really want to get there. This is the reason why we got so many different ways now. God made one way. One baptism, but it's now got a, you got a 33,000 religions right here in America alone. But in vain they do worship But in vain they do worship me. Teaching for doctors. Teaching the doctors and commandments of men. men. They teach the doctors and commandments of men. They think that they helping out God, but God don't need your help. God already know the way that he want to do. God already put it in his writings. Now you can't help God. You can't come up with a new way. Something God didn't authorize for you. Well, Leviticus 10 is going to prove it to you. Let's go to Leviticus 10, 1 through 2. I want everybody to write this scripture down. Because you need to know this. That you can just do something just a little off. Thinking you're helping God, but you're not helping God. You're hurting yourself. Leviticus 10, Leviticus 10 verses 1 and verse number 2. And, and Nadab, Nadab, Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his his censer and put fire therein and put light and put incense thereon. Stop right there. Do y'all think anything is wrong with burning incense? Well. Is there anything wrong with burning incense? It smell better. Hey, smell good. Like I'm, I'm going to just say it smells better. It smell good. Okay, go ahead, brother. And offered strange fire Offer before strange the Lord. Fire before the Lord. Well. He commanded, he them, commanded not. them not. Okay, let's go hard. I'll start right there. Okay, now the instruments and music that people have today, they'll say, well, a lot of people tell me my job I had this argument all the time. They'll say, well, he didn't say that you couldn't do it. He didn't command you to do it. So what you're doing is just like Adab and Abandoned, he commanded you not. But you want to go ahead and do it. And what happens to that, brother? Read the next verse. And there went out fire from the And they the went out fire from the Lord and devoured them, them and they died before the Lord. The Lord. They died before the Lord because they given God something he didn't ask for. Just like right now. If you give him instruments and music and he didn't ask for them, you're going to die before the Lord as well. God don't need your help. Trust me. He know everything. But that's why we got to continue to preach the word of God. Because that's all that we have. We don't have nothing else but the word. Let's go to 2 Timothy uh, 4 verses 2 through 5. Because this is what we have to do. You know, we can't preach all these gimmicks because as soon as you end up with a gimmick, then you got to go to another gimmick. Uh, that's what happened with that church. They started with the praise team. And now the praise team wasn't good enough. So now let's add some music to it. Let's add some women preachers. All this stuff was added to help God. God don't need your help. Let me, let me prove it to you. Let's go to preach the word. Be instant. In season. Out of season. I don't care if it's Mother's Day, Father's Day, Christmas, whatever got going on. We got to preach this word. Go ahead. Reprove. Reprove. Rebuke. rebuke. I got to correct you when you're wrong. That's what the Bible let me know. Go ahead. Exhort with all long suffering. And how are we going to do it? With the word. With the doctrine. For the time will come. For the time will come. That's the time we're in right now. Go ahead. They will not endure sound doctrine. But after they own us, shall heap themselves teachers having itching ears. Y'all know what that means? They want, they want to hear something that sounds good. Something that feels good. They don't want to hear the truth. 
We got to teach you the truth over here. Yeah. I don't care if you like it or don't like it. I got to do it because God told me to do it. Read the next one, brother. And they shall turn away. Their they should turn away from the truth. From the truth. And shall be turned unto faith. Turn unto faith. Like that man over there told him, it's okay to have instruments and music. Some of them have been turned over to these fables. It's a lie. But watch all in all things, endure affliction, and do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. So he don't told them a lie that it's okay to have an instrument in music. Yeah. And their ears are turned from the truth. That's why we can't have all these innovations in worship, y'all. We can't do all this. We can't have no piano up in here. Because God didn't tell us to do it. Now, if it was our church, we could do whatever we want to. That's why all the other churches do whatever they want to, because it's their church. T.D. Jakes can do whatever he wants to in this church, because it's his church. Yeah. It don't belong to God. Catholic people can do whatever they want to in their service, because it don't belong to God. A Baptist can do whatever he wants to in his service, because it don't belong to God. But if you belong to God, you got to do exactly like he said. Because yeah. he paid the cost for you and me. Paid the cost. Well, he gave his life that we might have the right to the tree of life. Let's go to Isaiah 53 and 5. Isaiah 53 and 5. I ain't got much longer, y'all. I told y'all I was going to be short today. Isaiah 53 and 5. But he was wounded. But he was wounded. He's talking about Jesus now. For our, for our sins. Jesus was wounded for us. Not something he did. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for he our niggas. They put that crown of thorns on his head. They beat him. They tortured him. Hung him on the cross. The chastisement of our peace, the chastisement of our peace was upon and him. him. And with his stripes, the beating, the torture, the pain that he took, we are healed by that. See, his pain brings life to us. The nails that went through his hands and his feet. Just imagine this, y'all. I can't hardly take a prick, a, a, a paper cut, <laughs> let alone some nails being driven through my hand on both sides. My feet being covered right in one in front of the other, and the nail driven through that as well. And I'm hanging, suffocating in my own blood. He did all this for you and me. He did all this for us. But yet most of us, are ashamed of him. Ashamed of the gospel. We won't let the world know that we are Christian. We want to be with them. I think he did all this for us. Second Thessalonians 1, 7 and 8 says, And you are troubled, rest with us, when the Lord shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, and flame and fire, taking vengeance on all them that know not God, and they obey not the gospel about Jesus Christ. He coming back for those that belong to him, belong to his church. Matthew 16 and 18, he promised that he's going to build his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus never had a them, y'all. He always had just it. He had one church. And then he told us you got to obey the gospel. Well, what is the gospel? Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, moreover, brother, moreover, brother I declare unto you, I declare unto you the gospel which you which I preach unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Stop right there, brother. Go on, keep reading. Okay, keep reading, brother. Go ahead. Go ahead. For I delivered unto you, the first of all, which I've also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, he was buried, he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So the gospel is simple this. The death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We say, well, brother, uh, I can't go back and do that again, can I? I mean, how can I, how can I obey the gospel? How can I obey what, what, what Jesus did for us? Well, it's called Romans 6 and 4. See, God will give you a way all the time. It may seem impossible to you, but God got a way for you. Romans 6 and 4 says what? Therefore, we are buried, we are buried with him by, with him by baptism into death. Into death. That like, like as Christ, that like Christ was, raised was raised from the dead the through the glory of the Father, even so, even so we, also we also should walk in the newness of life. 
So you obey the gospel by being buried in that watery grave of baptism. Rising up again, just like Jesus did. He rose from that grave. You're rising up a new creature. Something totally different and something totally new. Don't be ashamed of that. Because it can bring salvation to your soul. Now, if you've been a member of the church your whole life, and you know that you've been ashamed of Christ, that you haven't been pro- pro- talking about him to anybody, that you're so scared of him that people don't even know you're a Christian. You got to come confess. Let God know that going forward, Lord, I'm not going to be ashamed of you no more. Each and every person I encounter, I'm going to talk to him about you, Lord, because you did so much for my life that everybody I encounter, I'm going to tell them about you. That's what we have to be. That's what a Christian is all about. It's about speaking about the word of God, telling people about Jesus and what he done for you. And I know he done a lot for you. That's why you're here right now. But if you're not a member of the church, you have no chance to be saved. You have no opportunity at all to be saved. If you're not in the body of Christ, the church of Christ, you're going to be condemned when it's all said and done. The Bible says in Romans 10 and 17 that faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Once you hear that, you got to do some believing in John 8, 24. You got to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Yeah, man. Matthew 10, 32 says, then you got to do some confessing. Yeah. Jesus said, you confess me before men. I will confess you before my Father. Yeah. So Jesus tells him, you can't be ashamed of me. You got to confess me before men. <laughs> then you got to do some repenting, y'all. Yeah. I ain't talking about no reporting where you get up and say, well, I've sinned. No, we're talking about changing your life. The things you used to do to hold you back, you got to let those things go. If you want to be with God, you can't be in the church. Some people been in the church 20 years and got the same sins hanging them up from 20 years ago. You got to get past that if you want to be in heaven. Then, last but not least, you must be baptized according to Mark 16 and 16. And once you baptize, you come up out that water grave a new creature. But that don't stop right there. Revelation 2 and 10 says, then you got to be faithful unto death. We're going to give you the opportunity to come as we get ready to sing the Savior's invitation. Page 633. Careless soul.